Dr. Chait, thank you so much for being with us today. It's uh, you come highly recommended from a good friend to talk to, and uh, I'm I'm excited to uh, to uh, have this conversation with you today. Thank you, Keith. I appreciate it. Awesome. Let's let's just jump right into it. Let's let's discuss your background a little bit and what makes your approach to uh, physical therapy and nutrition and wellness uh, a little bit different than what uh, most folks have been exposed to in the past. Uh, I appreciate that question. You know, it's interesting. Um, when I was about six, seven years old, I was that odd kid that had anatomy posters in my bedroom, um, <laughs> 3D anatomy posters. And um, when I was when I was a young kid, I I, I hurt my ankle and I uh, I went to see a physical therapist. And I had no idea what a physical therapist was then. So mm-hmm. I was about six or seven years old at that time, and I just thought it was fascinating. This woman worked on me, and that day my pain felt so much better. And within a week, I was back to playing sports, and I was just fascinated with the fact that you could actually put your hands on somebody and have such a quick result and get somebody pain free very quickly. Um, and so I, I, I was the odd duck from that point forward where I would study movement and I didn't know I was studying movement. I was just blind. <laughs> My vision right. was really, really poor in high school and I refused to get glasses. Hmm. So I had to actually evaluate, didn't even know I was doing this, but I'd, I'd be able to figure out who my friends were from a distance by how they were walking. Um, and so it just got ingrained into my nervous system just to see how people move and how they function. And I was able to tie who they were um, just based on how they, they were walking. So it's really funny. That's um, interesting. And fast forward, I, I went to, uh, I, I applied to physical therapy school. And when I was 18 years old, I, I, um, I was in physical therapy school and I uh, was studying uh, Kung Fu and, um, and I wound up injuring myself. I, I kicked somebody's fo- um, elbow. Um, I'm sure that's happened to you, Keith, once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, only once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and you know how, how much that hurts. And, um, oh, yeah. And so my Kung Fu teacher pulled me into a room and he lights me on fire. And that's, that's all I know. Like I was... 19 maybe at that time and uh-huh. and he did something called moxa which in uh it's a chinese herb that you burn to increase blood flow and circulation and so from that point forward i was just fascinated with uh with uh, chinese medicine and and i was in pt school and i i studied uh with this guy kung fu for the next four or five years um while i was in school and it just by the time i finished pt school i i knew i wanted to become an acupuncturist of some sorts or study Chinese medicine. And it just fascinated me. And, um, and just fast forward a few years later, I, uh, I was, I was blessed to, to have a unique skill set. I think because, um, when I couldn't see my, my, uh, my friends in high school, um, and I was able to evaluate how they moved, I was able to see things where other clinicians couldn't see, um, just right. based on how my nervous system was wired at a young age. Um, and I got called up to the New York Knicks and, um, they wanted me to be a performance consultant for them and then New Jersey Nets. And then, um, I traveled with, uh, Alex Rodriguez for, for a period of time as well. And, um, and I was the go-to guy for a lot of pre-draft NBA work for a good three to five years in, uh, in the uh, 2001 to 2005 range. Um, and, uh, and I studied various forms of manual therapy, um, and I wasn't getting the results uh, that I wanted. So I had a very good friend of mine um, who was actually a, um, a martial artist too, too um, and he was in town uh, by my practice, and I kept on having to refer patients to him. Hmm. And he was a, a Chinese medical doctor, and he just got results, and I'm, I got so pissed off. <laughs> he was just like, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, you got to go back to school. Um, and so I did, I went back to school to become an acupuncturist, but I delayed two years. So I, I registered and every year I delayed and, uh, part of my French, I either had to take a shit or get off the pot. Right, um, yeah. and so I, I took a shit. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and, um, halfway through Chinese medical school, my wife at that time was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. Oh God. And so, um, I, uh, here I thought I was going to be a physical therapist that specializes, yeah, a physical therapist slash acupuncturist that specializes in pain management. Um, and, uh, and my world got shook, you know, 
Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and so my I I stopped working for a period of time and I traveled the country and, and the world um, to try to find somewhat of a, a cure for for my wife at that time. And um, and I studied with some of the 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 greatest healers you could ever imagine. These these people were just unreal, and I just followed them and I just followed them. And one guy actually interned for two years, never taught me one thing for almost two years. He just made me just shadow him. And then like a classical Chinese master, he finally te <laughs> started teaching. Something. I was going to say that's like the, uh, the cruel tutelage of Pai Mei <laughs> or whatever that is. Yeah. 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 And so, but he taught me his whole system in a week or two, you know? So it was, he was he was seeing how committed I was to to studying with him, um, and um, my wife uh, wanted passing eventually in two thousand one, mm. and then at that point I, I committed myself to a totally different venture of of medicine, um, and uh, and I started moving more towards preventive medicine. Um, nutrition is one of my my biggest fortes, and then became a specialist in um, in autoimmune disease. Um, and that's where my specialty is today. And I'm always growing and always learning. Um, but you know, I, and the, there's always a, a positive out of a negative. Um, I remarried the most beautiful woman in the world. Um, I have another, I have a daughter from my first wife and I have a, a son now who's just remarkable. Um, and, uh, and life is good now. And now I'm able to spread the message of, of living a long, healthy, happy life with people. That's awesome. That is awesome. I I I wonder if we could dive into um, uh, nutrition a little bit. And uh, one one of the questions I have written down here is, what do you think are some of the most common pitfalls people fall into when it comes to diet? When it comes to, hey, I, I want to lose some weight or I'm not feeling healthy. I need to make a change to my diet. What do you think are some of the most common pitfalls people fall into? I, I think, and including myself, and I, I think we fall into um, a one size fits all category. Mm -hmm. uh, I think typically, I'm, oh, I'm a keto guy, I'm a keto guido, you know, or I'm, I'm, I'm a vegetarian. I would never, never eat meat. Um, and it becomes this, this religious, like, zealousy of, of, you know, this is my dogma. Do not question my dogma. I'm a vegetarian, and that's the way I am. No matter right. how sick they are, or you know what, I'm I'm a keto guy, and um and that's 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 the best thing, and and I'm an Atkins guy or a Paleo guy, you know. Um, I think the most important thing is um is find it because everybody has their own biochemical individuality, right? So yes, um how your metabolic function is is totally different than mine, and so mm -hmm. where I think most people fail is that they're guessing on their metabolism. And there's a delicate mineral ratio uh, that sets the pace for our metabolism. So, for example, calcium and phosphorus, they have to be in a specific ratio in order for metabolism to be functional. Okay. Um, okay. Now, if somebody has, the ratio should be around 2.50. And if it's greater than 2.50, typically you're a slow metabolizer. In other words, you break down foods very, very slowly. So this okay. kind of person will need more digestive enzymes to help break down foods, number one. Number two is they should not be on a high fat keto diet. They probably do well on moderate fat, moderate protein, um, low carb. Okay. Where somebody that has uh, a calcium phosphorus ratio of below 2.5, then they're fast metabolizers or fast oxidizers. Now, a great example of this is, um, do you have any kids, Keith? I do. Oh, God bless you. Um, any, how old are they? She is seven. She's, she'll be turning eight in uh, June. All right. So do you remember the terrible twos? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. My son's going through the terrible twos now, right? They, yeah. He has to be in everything. Like everything, everywhere he goes, he's touching things. He's, he's like, he's all over the place. Right. So when we're younger, we're more biased to a fast metabolism. That's why we grow so rapidly. But as we age, we don't grow as fast. I mean, look at us. We, we, we're into fitness. So I know the remarkable uh, progress you've had over the past 18 months or so. I mean, that's incredible. You know, but as we age, unfortunately, our metabolism slows down and we can't actually put on the muscle mass or get as lean as we want 
because yes. it's simply our metabolism is not the same as it was when we were younger, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. But the great news is it can be fixed because we could put somebody on a, on, on a specific diet based on whether you're a slow or fast metabolizer. So a fast metabolizer, they can actually break down fats. They have no problems. They have enough hydrochloric acid production in the stomach to be able to break down fats. They have like this iron skillet of a stomach, you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> um, but they don't produce as much digestive enzymes. They're able okay. to produce enough hydrochloric acid, but they don't, they're not producing enough um, enzymes. So then foods putrefy in the small intestine. And then they'll have fast smelling ga foul smelling gas, they'll have bloatiness, you know, they'll, they'll go on a, a keto diet and, and they're going to feel really good initially and then their digestive system starts falling apart. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know, so the way I look at it, man, I think, I think there's, there shouldn't be no dogma, just in martial arts as well, there shouldn't be any dogma. Like um, every style has, has a benefit. Um, and if you could take and learn from different styles, you become a, a better practitioner. Same thing with diet, man. It's your uh, our diets just shouldn't be one set diet for all human species. Um, but there's certain foods we need to significantly avoid, and I'm sure that'll be one of your questions coming up soon. Well, you know, I was going to say I, I'm I'm fond of saying to people that I'm helping that your your body is the cheapest and most efficient nutritional uh, laboratory that there is on the planet all you have to do is start you know start putting things into it and see what kind of results you get and if as soon as you stop eating with your uh your stress levels and start eating for you know wellness you're going to see a huge benefit because you can mm -hmm. tap into that what are some of the things uh, I, I know you're doing it, it, now you're doing something with hair samples is that correct to determine what people's nutritional uh, deficits are can you yes, can sir. you go into that a little bit definitely definitely so uh, what we do is we do a hair biopsy uh, which is which just means we just cut your hair <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so fancy yeah. um and we send it up to a lab. Um, and the lab, um, there's only two labs in the country that really do this really, really well. Um, and we like this one lab that we use because um, they don't use any solvents that destroy the hair or the minerals. Um, and they do a, a light a light wash to the hair, but they don't they don't use any solvents that destroys the hair itself. Um, and then they uh, they basically um, figure out what mineral status you have in your hair. And so. Um, we can evaluate toxic metals like aluminum, mercury, lead, cadmium, um, uh, arsenic. Those are the, the, the most common um, heavy metals we see. Mm -hmm. um, the most common is aluminum. I, I've seen in my clinic more aluminum than I've seen mercury, which is interesting. And I don't know why. I don't know if it's a, a geographic thing in the Northeast. It's all uh, those burritos. It's all those burritos <laughs> wrapped in aluminum, man. Actually, that would be Southern California, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so we're able to also analyze, um, like you said, the deficits in specific minerals um, and dysregulation of minerals, more importantly. I think there's, there's a few minerals that are critical and they run the show. There's 18 primary minerals, um, but there's three three key minerals that if they're not in a delicate ratio, um, the body just cannot recover and heal as well as it should. Let's expand on that. I bet that's something that most folks have never, have never heard of it, it. You know, everything is like macros, macros, macros. Now that's, that's like the, the catch, the catch phrase, but you're saying there's some nutrients, uh, that, uh, are, uh, are key components into uh, your wellness. Oh, totally. Yeah. So macros are important, mm -hmm. but the micros give us life. Right. I like that. I'm writing Ooh. that down. Yeah. I just made that up. I got to start using <laughs> <laughs> You heard it first here, folks. Awesome. <laughs> hey, do you think you send that to me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will. <laughs> so we, we, we came from ash. Like, you know, ash to ashes, right? The ash is mm -hmm. just nothing but minerals. Right. That's it. So everything we eat is based on minerals. So um, the vegetables we eat, it's we're, we're eating the, the nutrients, but the nutrients are the minerals. And uh, the minerals are the, um, are the catalyst for all 
enzymatic function, all protein function, um, all vitamin function inside the body. So without minerals, you're missing a key component. And in fact, if you're mineral deficient, the heavy metal is going to step in and, and, uh, and pretend that it is a mineral. Mm. So I think a lot of people, they have increased heavy metals in their body because they're mineral deficient. Fascinating. Yeah. Now, now, where are we getting these heavy metals in our diet? Are, are, they, are they common or is this a more of a, a late 20th, 21st century type deal with the, the way our, uh, our food is being handled? Is it the water? What is, what is your, your, your thoughts on that? You know, it's interesting. Um, um, Dede Ching, which was uh, a book written, uh, one day, day, one, um, it's the Yellow Emperor's uh, handbook. It was, it, it was, it's the Bible in Chinese medicine. Okay. And uh, um, it was written approximately between 2,000 and 5,000 years ago. So it's, it's, it's pretty meaty, in, in, uh, and I've read it a couple of times. Extremely confusing. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, um, they, they talked about uh, um, something called um, uh, spleen chi deficiency. It's a concept, but um, it, it's the earth element. So there's a whole entire school in Chinese medicine that's based on the earth element being the center of everything. Um, and the earth is, is nothing but the pancreas, which is, which is the spleen in China's medicine and the stomach. So it's everything we're digesting, right? Um, now with, uh, with the mineral status, if we have the inability to, to digest and absorb efficient minerals in our system, the body is going to break down and it's going to cause oxidative stress and we just age at a much faster rate. Yes. Yes, I, 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 if I answered your question, I think I went off on a little tangent there. Did I answer your question? <laughs> I think in a way, I think in a way, I, 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 really what I was saying is, 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 you know, we know how we get minerals from eat, like you said, like eating the carrot or whatever, but wh where do I, where are the heavy metals coming from gotcha. in most that's, people's that's diet? The was. I yeah. went off on a tangent. So my, my, my point of bringing up that 2000 year old textbook is if they knew about heavy metals back then. We, they would have been treating it. I think today, those masters back in the day, mm -hmm. um, they would be doing what I'm doing now. They would be looking at hair mineral tests and, and getting rid of heavy toxic metals and supplying people with proper minerals. I see. That's I see. it. That's okay. it. Now, where we're we getting it is this. Um, we're getting it from the air we breathe, the water we drink, uh, and the food we eat, and the medication we take or inject. That is something I wanted to touch base with you on. I had a conversation not too long ago with uh, a fellow. I, man, I, I need to try to get him on the show. He he does a uh, he does a genetic test for folks who are taking medication to see if they're metabolizing the medication properly or not. And he's working with local doctors to do this because the blood pressure medicine you're on might not be the correct blood pressure medicine. Does that, does that make sense? It does. It does. And I think that's genius. I think that's the next wave of, uh, of medicine. Um, and hopefully it will come about, uh, but I think it's going to take us 20 to 40 years for it to yeah. really be adopted into, into medicine. I think you guys should chat. I'm going to get you his, uh, I'm going to get you his contact info once we get off the air here. Right. I, I think, I, th I think you guys would, uh, I think you guys would connect well. Uh, maybe you can maybe you can change the world for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the thing is, man, I'm not anti medication. You know, I'm not anti anything. Um, I'm I'm pro choice. Right, right. It's, it, I I I tell you, I um I know you and I have uh, uh, spoken offline about my my problems. I do have a, uh, a a problem with an ejection fraction on my heart, and uh, I was prescribed uh, digoxin which we all know, well, maybe all of us don't know, but digoxin is, is a bit of a poison uh, for, the, for your system. And uh, I, I, I took it for years, and one day, you know, when I take that medicine and it's in my system, I just felt like hell. Mm. And I was like, well, this medicine is supposed to be alleviating symptoms, but I have a whole new set of symptoms when I take this medication. So, uh, I mean, about, I don't know, about a year ago, I said, I'm not going to take this shit anymore and see how I feel. Yeah. 
you know, and I don't know if it's, uh, you know, I'm sure I want to, I want to talk about this later too, is that I'm, you know, you deal with a lot of people in pain. It's amazing what the body can get used to. I probably still feel like hell, but <laughs> well, you don't know the difference. I don't know the, yeah, exactly. I don't know exactly. the difference anymore. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, I, I think like, like you said, I think we're, we're moving towards a, uh, a, a point in medicine where we can, uh, instead of just, uh, the, the doctor saying, well, you just need, you need to take this. It's like, well, you, you could take this, but let's find out if this is actually what you need to be taking based on your, like you say, your, 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 your genetic makeup, your, you know, your, your, your diet, the way your body processes all this stuff. I think, um, I think it's going to be fascinating to see, uh, hopefully we all live long enough to, <laughs> to see to see humans that live 130 years i i, I don't know if that's well, in the realm of possibility we're, gene- we're genetically programmed to live to 120 are we really now yeah we're we're our our genes we we're genetically programmed to live to 120 and then i ask the question why don't we then you get some chill. A few people right <laughs> yeah. um but we we don't and i there's a physician named Dr. Hans Selye. He was an endocrinologist back in the 60s. And he was the pioneer behind uh, what's called the, 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 uh, the uh, it's called GAS, General Adaptive Syndrome. And what he found was right. that stress is the number, number one cause of all disease. And if you think about the stress response that occurs, and now that I understand minerals better, um, and we'll tie this back into the three core minerals that we're going to be talking about probably later. Um, whenever anybody has a, a stress response. Now, most people, when we talk about stress, they think we're talking about emotional stress, right? But most stressors is happening at a subconscious level. And I, I break it up into two types of stressors. Traumatic stressors, which do include emotional trauma. Mm-hmm. And then physical stressors. So if you're an athlete or a martial artist like you are, you've had probably a lot of trauma to your body, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, But say you were not an athlete and you are a dork like me and you're sitting in front of the computer studying hours a day, right? That's also a stressor. You know, so... Let me me, me ask you for a second. Does does the body know the difference between uh, physical stress and emotional stress or is stress just stress? Oh, great, 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 great. I love it, I love it. The body has no freaking idea. Okay. Because the hormones, the same hormones are being released, whether I have an emotional stress response or a physical stress response. So we're going to produce hormones by the adrenals called catecholamines, which include adrenaline, cortisol, noradrenaline, epinephrine. Those are the hormones that are typically produced whenever anybody has a stress response. Okay. Now, trauma, uh, death of a loved one, right? Um, uh, uh, medication can be a trauma, right? Um, uh, the, uh, uh, moving to a different state or somebody cutting you off in the morning or, or sitting at your desk for prolonged periods of time. Those are all traumas, right? Right. But the second half of the coin is what most people don't talk about. It's very common in Germany. Um, the Germans call this the terrain. Now the terrain is like the soil of the body. And if you're a delicate flower like I am, right, <laughs> if in order for us to bloom, we need to have water, sunlight, and oxygen above the soil. Mm. But in the soil, we need minerals and enzymes and bacteria. We want to make sure there's no toxic element coming into the soil that's going to affect the plant from blooming. So all we are as a human species is animated soil. That's it. That's interesting. So uh, can I use your heart as an example? Yes, please do. I have permission. Okay. So um, the, the heart is a very greedy individual. Yes, he is. It, <laughs> that guy, God bless him, but he is, in Chinese medicine, he's called the emperor. He is like the king of all the other organs in the body. And what's interesting is the emperor, he needs to have everything in order, right? He has an yeah. army. He has generals. He has servants. Like that's, that's the rest of the body, right? But the, the, the heart needs to eat first. It needs to get all its food first. Guess what the number one mineral that feeds the heart is? The number one mineral? That feeds the heart. Magnesium. Because it's a muscle, right? Correct. 
Yeah. Okay. So everybody, everybody, See, I'm paying I, attention here. <laughs> well, I'm paying attention here. <laughs> <laughs> right by now, this should be really exciting. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to paint a picture for you. Are are the is the population told to go on calcium magnesium supplements combined? Um, are they only told to go on magnesium, or are they only told to go on calcium? And the answer to that is a rhetorical question because most of my patients that come in the door, they're on a calcium supplement mm-hmm. and magnesium or just a pure calcium supplement. Now, calcium and magnesium are antagonists. So if magnesium causes the muscles to relax, it's a muscle relaxer, what do you think calcium is doing? It's stressing the muscle. Exactly. Exactly. So if calcium is increased in the body. This is why I like doing the, the hair tissue test because we look at these ratios. If calcium is elevated, what's a byproduct of calcium? There's something called calcification. So what ha- actually happens to the heart when we have arterial sclerosis? Right. It's calcification of the heart. That's fascinating. The, I should say. You know, but then what decreases calcification? Magnesium. So it's common sense. And the first mineral that gets depleted under a stress response, no matter whether it's a traumatic event, emotional event, uh, biomechanical, um, a digestive dysfunction, doesn't matter what it is. Magnesium is the, is the first mineral that's excreted. We burn through it. So under a stress response, yeah, you know, we're producing all these hormones, adrenaline and cortisol, but we're also burning through our magnesium stores, which increases the calcium in our tissues, which could cause muscle cramping. It could cause dysregulation of blood sugar, uh, which mm-hmm. is common under a stress response. It could cause osteoporosis. It, you name it, it could cause it. One thing I've noticed is, and I'm sure a lot of people have this, you have the restless legs. Mm-hmm. At, at night when you, you, you know, anytime I'm feeling that I'm like, ah, yep, I need to do something, whether it be take a supplement or, or, or find a way to get more magnesium into my diet, because that's, that's right. one of the, that's one of the things that b- it bothers me. I get the, uh, what was it? Uh, Kramer in, uh, uh, Seinfeld called it the Jimmy legs. <laughs> <laughs> you get the Jimmy legs at night. That is fascinating stuff. So, so, uh, calcium, magnesium, or two, because we were we were, we touched upon these key nutrients. Uh, what are what are the other ones we need to be focused on for so optimal the, health? The big, the big three are calcium, copper, and iron. Okay. okay. Now I know copper is a is a conductor, right? Oh, so smart. Yes. And iron is the uh, uh, helps with uh, building. Uh, new blood cells. Am I am I right on this? Yes. Let's talk about iron real quick. You are 100 okay. percent accurate on the initiation of the building of red blood cells. Okay. So this is what's fascinating. If we have, and this is the misconception, and I'm going to sound um, uh, like a heretic now. <laughs> okay. Please, by Ready? all means. <laughs> Uh, and this goes against every, not every, most medical doctors, because they're not, they're trained differently than, than natural medicine guys are, okay. right? You look at things from a, a, an adaptive physiological perspective, like why is it happening? Uh, where um, doctors, thank God we have them, they're looking for pathology and they save people's lives on a daily basis. Right. Uh, but their strength is not treating chronic illness. Their strength is treating acute disease. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I have utmost respect for them because of that and all the schooling that they've, they've had to go through, um, it is remarkable and I respect every one of my doctor friends. Um, but there's, their, their patients are suffering because they're not treating nutritional, nutritional deficiencies that are causing their illness. Well, Evan, I I would, I would say it's kind of like the difference between a trainer and a coach and a you know, a, a, a doctor and a, or a nutritionist or a, uh, you know, a well, a wellness professional is that, you know, when you look at, uh, a doctor, they're more, 
uh, the more geared towards treating symptoms as opposed to treating the root cause of it. And I think that's what you're tapping into here. Yeah. Same with a coach versus a trainer. A trainer can show you how to do a perfect uh, a back squat, right? But it might not be able to find out you know, the deeper understandings of why you need, you need to be doing a back squat <laughs> as, as far as, uh, the, yeah, it, 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 you, you see where I'm going with that. Yeah, I do. I do. Okay. Now, I'm sorry this, to interrupt this, you, but. Oh, no, this is good. Cause this is perfect. Um, so we have, let's talk about a red blood cell. So, okay. um, let's talk about bone marrow first. Uh, let's start with something that's, that's relatively simple that people could follow. Okay. This gets really, really, really complex. And I, what I'm trying to do is make something very complex, simplified, so I can explain it to people. And it's not that easy. So bear with me and let me know if you track. Okay. All right. <laughs> so we're, let's just imagine we have bone marrow in front of us. And bone marrow is where red blood cells are manufactured, they're made, and then it's carried throughout the whole entire body in our circulation. So um, a red blood cell, we have an immature red blood cell, and then we have a mature red blood cell. So an immature red blood cell needs iron to be made okay but a mature red blood cell if it has iron in it cannot mature so here we have iron that is necessary for the beginnings of making a new red blood cell but if it stays inside the tissue tissue being the cell a cell can't mature to become an adult okay so we could have one mineral that's both toxic for us and necessary for us at the same time. Okay, I see. I see what you're saying. So it 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 needs to be the appropriate amount at the appropriate time. Correct. And and right. the iron needs to be able to leave the tissue. Right. So, for example, um, if I was a hammer and I went outside for a month. What's going to happen to me? You would oxidize. Oxidize. So when I combine iron plus oxygen, what happens? Right. You ru it creates you rust. rust. Yeah, you yeah. rust. You, mm -hmm. So that's what happens inside our body. So if, if iron stays in a tissue too long, it's going to rust. And that's what's called lipid peroxidation, also known as oxidative stress. That's how oxidative stress occurs. Huh. Huh, exactly. <laughs> so when we have iron, excess amount of iron tissues. Now, if it's not in the t if it's if it's too much in the tissues, do you think there's gonna be a lot in blood circulation? No. So we could have high tissues and low in circulation, and when a doctor does a ferritin blood test, they're gonna say the patient's anemic. When right. then they're gonna give them more actually, iron. They they're their iron homeostasis is off. Right. So then how does iron leave the tissue? So it's, it does its job appropriately. All right. And that's when this, this buddy, his buddy copper comes in and says, okay, you know what? I'm stepping in. You step out. I got this buddy. So in order for a, a red blood cell to become mature, we need copper in the cell, iron out of the cell. But most people are copper dysregulated. You know why? No. Because we're lacking in a, a vitamin called vitamin A, retinol. And I didn't say beta carotene, I said retinol. Retinol comes from organ meats. Okay. And if you look at our ancestors for thousands right. and thousands of years. They ate awful. Yes, we, we, we ate organ meats. We didn't eat right. the meats. We mm -hmm. ate the organs. We gave the meat to our animals, the flesh. And so we've developed over a period of time to where we are today based on vitamin A. And vitamin A is extremely important to produce an enzyme called ferrous oxidase. I call it foxy lady. <laughs> and foxy lady tells copper to function and copper tells iron to function 
That is fascinating. I've, I've never, I've never heard that. And I'm willing to bet that most people listening to this have never heard that either. But it does, it, it makes, it makes good sense. Everything starts with, like you said, everything starts with the heart. And what does the heart do? It sends out all the nutrients to the rest of the body via the blood. Correct. Correct. And now check this out. If I go through a stress response and magnesium burns through my body, iron goes up in the tissues. So under stress, we store more iron. And also under, under stress, we store more iron. And guess what is attracted to iron? Fungi, parasites, mm, okay. uh, bacteria. Uh, they, they, they all are attracted. So our immune system becomes compromised. That's why the common, the, the, uh, the, the common, uh, analogy is the more stressed out you are, the more sickly you feel or the more susceptible you are to auto autoimmune diseases or the, the common cold, things like that, because yeah. it breaks your system down. Exactly. And what's interesting is this, there's. Um, in autoimmunity, now the, the, what they're finding is that there's over 300 diseases that fall into the autoimmune category. Um, and they're saying now that osteoarthritis is actually falls underneath an autoimmune category, not just rheumatoid arthritis. Even heart disease is, they're now ca categorizing it as an autoimmune issue. Well, it makes sense. It is just a, a, it's a form of inflammation. That's exactly what it is. And there's, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more. Of, uh, of mechanisms that cause it, but mm -hmm. one of them is is the the top five foods that I would have everybody avoid. Okay, um, wheat, rye, barley, oats, and cow dairy. Um, those contain what's called gluten. Right. And even though cow dairy does not have gluten, it has something called A1 casein, and it mimics gluten inside the body. Okay. And so when we have gluten. Human beings cannot digest it. The cows can because they have multiple stomachs. <clears throat> we cannot digest it. And so what happens is it enters the small intestine and it causes a molecule called zonulin to become active. And zonulin tells the tight junctions of the small intestine to say, you know what? Let's open up. So then food stuff actually passes through the gut wall and enters the bloodstream. The next thing you know, our favorite food like uh, like chocolate, we become allergic to, or uh, shrimp, or it doesn't matter what the food is. But that's the precursor of what happens with autoimmunity. Now, is that what uh, what what you commonly hear uh, uh, people talk about having a leaky gut? Exactly, exactly what I'm talking about. Now, okay. iron plays a huge role in this too, because iron gets stored also in the microvilli of the intestines, small intestine particularly. Mm-hmm. So if you think about, um, you and I be strength trained, right? Um, right. If I put um, a barbell on a mat, it's going to cause the mat to collapse in a little bit, right? Yes. So same thing happens in our, in our gut. And we have these villi that are like fingers, and they come out of the intestines. And that's how all nutrients get absorbed. But if the villi are flat, like making a fist, nutrients can't get absorbed into the bloodstream. And what's weighing these, uh, these villi down is iron. That is fascinating. Yeah. So it's it, it's it's not just affecting the transportation of nutrients throughout the body. It's also it also begins uh, affecting the absorption of the nutrients in the first place. I love how you position that. Yes, exactly, exactly. And there's what's interesting is there's five times more iron in a tumor cell than there is in a healthy cell. Huh. So think about that one. Yeah. So so back to your back to your hair uh, your hair uh, what you call it a hair biops uh, yeah what, hair tissue test hair yeah. tissue test. So you get that you send that out you get that result back, and then it's time for you to sit down and decide. Okay, I have this client. They have uh, you know these symptoms, and based on what I'm seeing here, you determine. This person needs X amount of magnesium, X amount of, am I, am I tracking you here? 
Yes, and, but what we've we, what we've created is a simple version. Now, I've, I've studied with several people mm -hmm. um, uh, on mineral testing, and and they each have a different spin on it. But when you understand the biochemistry, there's really only four or five things that people need to take on a daily basis. All right, and they need to eliminate the except for the weekends. Like I, I'm a I'm a realist, so I I have planned <laughs> cheat meals for my patients. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. As long I, as <laughs> as long as Monday through Friday you go strong, have as much fun on the weekend as you want. You need to live. Yeah, because I, that 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 falls into that D word, the diet and diet. It's just another word for deprivation. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. I had, uh, I took a picture of uh, a big pile of, uh, of French fries with bacon, bacon on them yesterday. I was like, I, I just, I just squatted 315. I'm eating French fries today. <laughs> you know, we got to be able to enjoy life. I'm a little bit more strict in my, in my diet because. Whenever I have gluten, I get sick. Like I get cold. Mm -hmm. and, um, I, 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 I think I have a true uh, gluten intolerance. Um, um, but most people, what's interesting is everybody's heard of celiac disease. Right. But have you ever heard of non-celiac wheat or gluten sensitivity? Uh, no. Oh, nobody's heard of that. But it's, yeah. it's very well documented. So you don't have to have celiac disease to have a, a wheat or gluten sensitivity. I I went through a, a phase uh, back way back when when the gluten uh, the, the the gluten free phrase was going around and I I, I I experimented with gluten free and then here recently you know with my uh, my my tr uh, most recent transformation uh, I I didn't look at it as so much as um, I wanted to eliminate gluten altogether, but that's just kind of what happened because I was looking at the bread and the pastas and all that as just ridiculously high amounts of carbohydrates. And I think as a uh, as a species on this planet, particularly in the United States, we are carbohydrating and sugaring ourselves to extinction. You know, it's interesting. Um, when Abraham Lincoln was president, uh, the average American had two and a half pounds of cane sugar which also included all the minerals, per mm -hmm. year, per year. Uh, the average American now has anywhere between 250 and 350 pounds of sugar per year. That doesn't even seem possible, does it? I, exactly, because you're probably not, you're probably maybe one pound or two mm -hmm. pounds. I'm probably one pound, two pounds. So somebody's making up for both of us. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah, is, it, 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 is, it, now, it doesn't even seem, it, it's... Um, What's the phrase? It's 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 too true to be true. Yeah. Or or from uh, um, uh, um, Princess Bride. Inconceivable. Inconceivable. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't it doesn't seem possible for me to eat that much sugar. Yeah. But what, what it is, it's found in everything like the high fructose corn syrup is found in every cereal. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody has a can of soda. A day, and look at you have a can of soda that has phosphoric acid in, in an aluminum can, right? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. And sugar, but you actually get in the 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 aluminum into the soda that you're drinking. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's just baffling. It's and people don't know. They have no, no idea. They don't. And, and, and sodium is the same way. What's that? Sodium is the same way. Yeah. People don't know realize how much. Uh, I, I was doing some research not too long ago, and it was it was like, um, oh, I don't want to quote it because I might get it wrong. But the the amount of sodium, you know, the uh, the uh, World Health Organization recommends us getting less than I think it's twenty two hundred milligrams per day or something like that. And it was like the average American was doubling that, almost tripling that every day. Yeah, and they're getting it from horrible salt. Yeah, so, it's not. Yeah, it's not like it's uh, you know sea salt yeah. or yeah, yeah or just even from the vegetables. People don't realize your vegetables already have salt in them. I mean, it doesn't taste as good, but yeah. you know, it's it's there. It's from the earth. Yeah, but, and it, but yeah, it's, it's fascinating. It's bound, it's bound to other minerals, mm -hmm. so it works synergistically with each other. The table salt, it's denatured. There's nothing in there that is 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 a food. Oh well, they put iodine in it now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. 
Hey, I, if you would, you know, we've got, uh, you know, I try to keep this about an hour, uh, hour and 20 minutes or something like that, if you would. And I know you're a busy man, too. I'd like to switch gears just a little bit. Not that this hasn't been fascinating talk, but what I would like to talk to you about, because you do deal with people in pain on a normal or on a, on a daily basis. Um, let's kind of move it as you get older. We have daily aches and pains, but is, is this normal or can it be avoided altogether with, uh, you know, just some of the stuff you're talking about and, uh, basic, uh, practices, daily practices. I think the, the, you know, what's so funny is I get people that walk in, um, and they're, they're 50 or 40 and they're like, Oh, I'm getting older. I have low back pain. I'm like, dude, I have, I'm treating a 16 year old that has low back pain too. It has mm-hmm. nothing to do with age. Right? I'm four, going to be 43. I have no pain anywhere in my body. You know, no. Oh, I hate no. you. <laughs> <laughs> but I also, I, I, I've been eating like this. How I describe what, what I profess, I practice what I preach. And I've been doing it since I was 22. Mm-hmm. Um, so for almost 21 years, I haven't had the same oxidative stress that other people have had because I've been doing this for, for a period of time, you know, and if I feel pain, I, I just, I don't, if I'm going to work out and I don't feel well, I stop. I listen to my body. You know, I don't try to tough anything out anymore. Uh, there's another day I go tomorrow. I'll take two weeks off if I need to. Yeah. You know, I, I also practice um, gratitude on a daily basis, which I think, plays a critical role in, in my health. Let's expand on that a little bit. Cause I, I think, uh, I, I think when people start hearing stuff like, uh, it, you know, implementing gratitude into your daily, uh, you know, your daily routine, they start, you know, Oh, that's a little, you, you know yeah. what I'm trying to say? It, yeah. It's a, it's a little yeah. out there, yeah. you know? So, yeah. Yeah. It's a little yeah. loose. But uh, let, let's let's expand on that a little bit. Yeah, definitely. There was a, a study I read recently that fear um, it causes cancer cells to grow. Mm. So what are the two most common emotions that people feel? Anger and fear. They're angry about something that has happened or they're fearful of the future. Yes. Right. So where we don't meet up is in... Which is stress. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And so... We don't, and in Chinese medicine, anger is the liver and fear is the kidneys or adrenals. Mm. Um, and by practicing gratitude daily, just being thankful for five or 10 minutes, just making a checklist. Like I, I started with something stupid, like thank you for the underwear I'm wearing, you know, <laughs> or thank you for the <laughs> chair I'm sitting in. Um, right. Because then I'm not thinking about yesterday. I'm not thinking about later on today or next week at that present time. I'm thinking about everything I'm blessed for. And after holding my wife when she died and holding my son after when he died, you know, I wake up every single day thanking God for every single little thing in my life. Mm. You know, um, if there's one thing that, that I would suggest anybody that's listening to this and all my patients, spending five minutes of just showing gratitude every single day and do it first thing in the morning because it's going to set the day for you. Yeah, that's. I think that's a powerful message. It's it. If you really wrap your brain around it, everything we've talked about today is how to, uh, you know, kind of kind of work around that stress response that your body has. Right. And uh, just taking five minutes out of your day and saying, "Hey, man, I'm 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 thankful that I can get up and go to work today. I'm thankful that I have a car to drive that has a, you know, that is going to get me to work." Yeah, you know, expanding on that. That's that's just a way. In a in a way, I mean, you just say it's 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 a, me- a meditation, and it's just finding a way in your day to start dropping those stress levels a little bit, getting that. Uh, getting that cortisol out of the body exactly. and, uh, you know, is starting to get off on the right foot. Um, I wonder if you could, uh, when we wrap this up, I, I know, uh, we've talked about the, um, the, uh, the nutrition a lot. Let's say somebody comes in and like me, for example, I come in, I have aches and pains in my knees from, you know, uh, you know, 20 plus years of, 
kicking things, being kicked in the knees. I, I have knee pain. I, uh, I wrap my knees or I wear the, the, the sleeves when I work out and everything. And then, um, you know, if someone were to come in and, uh, talk to you about that, what 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 would be your approach to you know trying to eliminate that pain? I, I I know some of it could probably be well you need to go to the doctor and get a CT scan, but you know uh, maybe maybe they've already been seeing the doctor or whatever. Can you just kind of give us a, a you know some, for people who've never been to a physical therapist or whatever, what, what kind of is the process that you go through to start eliminating pain for someone? Uh, I what I would do is find out whether it's an, an acute issue or a chronic issue. Mm-hmm. So uh, an acute issue is anything that was within a month, pretty much. A chronic issues are typically longer than a month. Some okay. literature says it's between two and four weeks for it to be chronic. Um, because once we hit a chronic situation, it's no longer a musculoskeletal issue, and it's a neurological issue. I'm going to repeat that. Anytime a pain has been in the body for longer than four weeks, the brain reprograms itself. It's actually called cortical smudging. It's very well documented in pain science. So mm -hmm. how we treat somebody that has acute pain is totally different than how we treat somebody with chronic pain. But the assessment strategy is both the same. So I'm going to watch you move. So our PTs are very unique. Um, most PT clinics, unfortunately, they'll put you on a hot pack, cold back, east stem, and call that physical therapy. Mm -hmm. I, part of my French, but I think that's all bullshit. Right. Um, we need to be able to evaluate him, how somebody moves. Look at what's pathobiomechanically wrong. Patho is bad, biomechanics. So watch them walk, watch them squat, watch them move. Um, if it's a knee issue, I want to see what the ankle's doing. I want to see what the hip's doing because the knee is a dumb functional hinge joint. And mm. I want to see what's happening to the core as it relates to the knee. Now, that's for an acute or chronic issue. Now, um, if, it's a, if it's a chronic issue, and then I want to do the hair mineral analysis on you. And you probably need acupuncture at that time uh, because with any kind of chronic issue, because of the stress response that occurs over time and the, the burn rate of magnesium and when burn, when magnesium increases or decreases, rather iron increases, copper becomes more dysregulated, muscles go into spasm for a longer period of time. Um, so I'd want to know what's happening inside the body. Um, and we do acupuncture because with the, that cortical smudging, the brain rewiring itself, there's only one mechanism in the body that actually uh, reprograms the brain, and that's called proprioception. And so yes. exercises, exercise increases – proprioception is where the body is in space. So, so exercise increases proprioception. Massage therapy increases proprioception. Chiropractic will increase proprioception. And acupuncture will, uh, will increase proprioception more than anything else simply because we're actually breaking the skin with the needle. That's interesting. Um, I'm wondering, I, I, while you were talking, I was, I was, I, I had to look something up real quick. Um, are you familiar with the book, why zebras don't get ulcers? Oh yeah. Yeah. I think that's, I, I, I've, I've skimmed over. I, I need to, I'm, I'm so bad about reading, you know, I, I, I wish there was a YouTube video of it, <laughs> but, uh, but I've, I've, I bet I've, there is. I bet there is if I just go look. Um, Everything we've talked about today has kind of let kind of kind of uh, dovetailed into that concept that uh, you know for for people who are who who don't know that the, the the concept that zebras don't get ulcers because all day long what are zebras they're they're like really really chill right and then here comes the lion and they run like hell to get away from the lion and then. Instead of being stressed out about the lion for the next, you know, 23 hours, they go back to chill. So they have that very high spike in stress response, and then they go way down to a very low stress. Res am I am I getting that right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. And and the concept is is that if you if you if you did that on a bar graph, and looked at the way, you know. 2019 humans in America live, we don't have those highs and lows. We are constantly in a, a state of medium to high stress across the, the graph. Correct. And, you know, the things you're talking about help us 
create, go back to creating those highs and lows. And, uh, uh, I, I think, you know, we live in a constant state of steady stress. There's nowhere there's, there's, you know, there's nowhere to go up and down to, you know, relieve these symptoms. And I think, uh, I think some of the, some of the things you're talking about today kind of t- dovetail very well into that, especially with the nutrition, because if you're, if you're constantly living in a state of stress and then the, the mineral deficiency is there as well, there really is no turning back. Is there? Yeah. Yeah. That's why, that's why it's in patients always ask me, Oh, well, I have to be in the supplements for, for long term. I'm like, yeah, I mean, this is, this is foundational nutritional support for your health for life. Yeah. And we've narrowed it down to four or five products. Um, one product is called Vita Repair. That's mm-hmm. a whole food liquid multivitamin that has high amounts of vitamin C. Um, and it has all the minerals that we need in proper ratios. And then we have something called Vita Digest that specifically heals a leaky gut. Um, it's loaded full of the most powerful digestive enzymes you could find in the market. Uh, it also has uh, probiotics in there that actually survive stomach acid. Most probiotics don't survive stomach acid, so they're completely worthless. Um, and then a couple of herbs in there to help regulate blood sugar. And then we have our, our, our uh, fat-soluble vitamins, um, retinol, vitamin A, mm-hmm. uh, from bovine liver, uh, as well as cod liver oil. And then one sleep formula to help people sleep so we can tap into that rest and relax component of our, of our hormonal cascade. That valley, hitting that valley at the end of the day. Yeah. 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 That's that one we call Vita Sleep. So we have Vita Repair, Vita Digest, we have Vita Omega, uh, Vita Metabolism, and then uh, Vita Sleep. Are, are, these, uh, are these products on your website? They are not. Only Vita Repair is. Okay. Uh, but the, the, other, the other four, we're actually in manufacturing now. It should awesome. be launched for the next two to three months. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I tell you what I'd like to do. I'd like to have you back on when that happens. And let's, let's, let's dive into those, uh, you know, in detail and talk about them at that time. And, uh, uh, if, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, how should they do so? Uh, you could go to my website, www.kinetic, K I N as in Nancy E T as in Thomas, I C as in cat PT as in Peter Thomas.com www.kineticpt.com or you can call the office number at 201-327-1990 201-327-1990 Dr. Evan Chait thank you so much for being on the show I, I was I, honestly I could probably talk to you for another couple hours <laughs> <laughs> thank and you. maybe maybe once we end this we will you know, I will, we'll just, we'll just stop. Maybe, <laughs> but, um, I really, I really enjoyed, uh, having you on the show and I'd like to have you on again sometime, to talk more about your, your products and your, your, your practice. And, um, we will, uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Keith. All the best.